welcome to PG TV. I'm here with my friend Paul Chuckler. Um, and Paul's going to show us how to fish the Devon Minnow today. So, Paul, perhaps you could just talk us through your rig and what you've got. It's quite simple, really. Got two BB swivels in line. Yeah, so, two BB swivels. Yeah. So, let's come a little bit closer to the camera and show the viewers a bit closer. Pick them down. So, this is what we've got. These are salmon, these are proper salmon swivels. Yeah. They're about yeah, seven. proper game swivels. Game swivels. So, just drop down a bit, Paul, so we can see you. So what you've got here is you've got the two swivels. Yep. They're about 70p each, aren't they? They're quite expensive, yeah. But what makes them so special? Well, they're just their strength and, and their ultra ability to spin, you know. Okay. Uh, a lot of people use a three-way swivel here. Okay, just drop down. But I question. don't. Yeah. What I use is a rubber bead. Rubber bead? To protect the knot. So a rubber bead to protect the knot. And just a bead with a... Let's just show the viewers that in detail. So a bead with an eye off the side, which runs up and down freely, okay, yeah. with a clip swivel on the end. Clip swivel on the end, let's show you the viewers that. So you've got a clip, clip swivel. swivel on the end, and so you can change the weight to vary your weight. And what are you going for uh, today? Uh, with different pools. And what are you going for today? That's about one an ounce. One, and one ounce, so if there's a half fast flow, you can put a two ounce or yep. one and a half. Two you adjust according to the flow? Yes. Very good. Yeah. And you're only looking at there, no more than about, what, eight, ten inches? Yeah. And that's going to be bouncing on the that's on the bottom on the bottom of the and gravel the bed. And the Devon follows behind it. So the Devon like follows behind. So let's just have a look at the length of what we've got here. So we've got effectively. Let's look at the length of that. I reckon there's about. So you've got about a foot. To foot that between swivel, the swivels. Foot between the swivels and two feet off that. Yeah, two two and a half foot. To the Devon Minnow. Now let's yeah. just show, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just show the the Devon Minnow. Now what um what you're going for today, Paul? What's, what's, Hopefully a salmon. Okay, but just talk me through the Devon. This is a that's a yellow belly. A yellow belly, famous yellow be belly, yeah. and they're made of balsa wood. That's made of. Uh, I wouldn't say balsa wood, just wood. Made of wood. Pine. Pine, and uh, you can see there the eyes on it. it. Looks very good. And what happens is, as that goes into the current, that spins. It's got a couple of little blades on there. You see the two blades, which is basically the fins. When you work that across the current, that will spin like that and it will create a yellow and green effect. And then you have the treble. You have a splash of red in it. Splash of red in there as well. And then the treble, and what do you call this this thing here? Olive. Olive, okay. <laughs> and you've got some really strong, powerful hooks out the back there. That looks very good, Paul. So that's the setup, ladies that's and gentlemen. It. And obviously, when we get out to the fishery, we'll show you how it's working in the water. Now, I've got to set this up for myself. I'm gonna try and catch a salmon on the Devon Minnow myself, and I've got Paul to guide me through it. So Devon minnow set up here in the dust. And what you've got there is you've got the, the, weight link. the weight link that's going on first. I've prepared the two double barrels on my rig, so I've got one barrel there with a foot and one there with a foot and a blind in between. And I've got 18 pound maximum two feet coming off there. So that's going to support and suspend the Devon minnow. And then we just have to have a, a little drop off, drop off that comes off there, isn't it? And Paul's making up a drop off. That consists of a link swivel. Really, you should a link swivel. Um, have slightly less line on it just in case your okay. weight gets caught. Okay. But and that basically suspends the weight, and the link swivel allows you to change the weight accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with paper or pull. Paper or pull. And what have you got there again? What's that called? It's just a bead with a. It's just a bead with a like a and they get an eye coming off of it. So that's from. So that just runs up and down the line. And you get that from the tackle shop, do you? Yeah. Oh, David's tackle down in Royal David's here. Yeah, okay. And how much are these for packing on the oh, well, So that's what we've got. Let me just show the view of that. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, I've got it. That's lovely. Sweet. So I'm used to using three way swivels. Yeah, well, but I just think it's really ugly. But I think they're awkward and they get caught up. They do. Yeah. So I'm thinking this is going to be a much better rig, slide, sliding rig. Do, no I, do I then tie this on now or no, should I try? No. no? So we've got a rubber shock going in there. So that's a shock absorber, is it? So that it just protects the swivel. It, it protects a bit more the cushion. Knot. It protects the knot. Okay. Let you try that knot. So yeah. it's for something to come apart. I love my uni knots. I'll show the viewers well, my, yeah, my uni it's knots. Ninety-eight percent efficient. Use it on every single possibility: hooks, swivels. You double up. You double up over the line. Instead of doing a half flood knot, you go over two strands of line. And it gives you 98% efficiency. And I always swear by it because I can't touch it. So that's the uni knot. You slide it back like that. And the more
smaller fish pulls, the tighter that becomes. So like, it, it slides like a noose. Look, see how, see how that slides out? And then we can trim that. So we're almost there. Then we've got our shock absorber. We've got our bead. That can suspend the weight off the top there. Now bring that down. The next job is to put the Devon Minnow on it. So have a look at how you're doing that. So that threads through there. So I'm using well, a lot of people use a mount. Um, I tend not to. I mean. And that's a bolster, is it? Or a wooden one that's again? That's a wooden one. Yeah. I love the wooden ones. The benefit of the wooden ones is they float. So the idea is the weight takes you down, but the wooden spinner or the wooden Devon works above the weight. Yeah. And therefore it never gets snagged up on the weed beds. It works then above the weed beds. Down. That's the olive, is it? Can I have a look at that? That's called an olive, ladies and gentlemen. That's like a mountain. Tie the hook in. I'll tie the hook. And what size hooks are we using? Now, I that's, that's, that's an eight, I think. Six or an eight is solid. Size four. Four. So no, me no, no messing around. So that goes in there. And again, we tie the uni knot. So I'm almost there. I just need to get a couple of weights now. Have you got a couple of little I've weights there? Well, right, one and well, two I'll give you one when we get there. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, it would keep banging against the rod all the way down. Okay. I'll just finish this off to show the viewers what I've done with Paul's help. And I like the look of this fish. I get to make an Atlantic salmon. I should keep with it. So, let's have a look. So, we'll just trim that. I'll show you the mounting now. So, that fits into the olive. Yeah. The hook goes in. So, let's have a look at that, ladies and gentlemen. So, ladies and gentlemen, look at that. That's lethal. But the hook doesn't actually fit in the mountain, or does it? Oh, it pulls in. It pulls in. How far does that pull in? Do you just push that's it in? It. You push it in, do you? I think that's about it. As far as it goes? Mm. There you go, that's good. Push it. That is a masterpiece. Look at that. If I was a salmon, I'd want that. Don't you? Yeah. And that's going to spin. And I caught my, by the way, I caught my Atlantic yesterday on an orange flying sea. Yeah. That's why I've gone for that, ladies and gentlemen. I think orange is going to give me the edge. Well, I might switch to orange in a bit as well, actually. But, uh, but then having said that, the yellow took, yeah. the, took what I thought was a sea trout. Paul actually thinks it's a, it's a, it's a salmon. salmon, which takes four for the season, if you're, if you're right. So, I'm um, just have a look at that. <laughs> it's not a trout. <laughs> okay, I think a lot of uh, the viewers would agree with you. Half would agree and half would disagree. So there we go, we've got the, uh, the rig now. I'm just going to show you this. Uh, totality. So Paul, can you just hold that for me while I quickly show you what we've got there? So that's where the weight's going to be suspended. Swivel, swivel. Then you've got six feet maximum off that for this beautiful Devon Minnow. And I'd like to thank Paul for introducing me. I have seen this rig before, yeah. but never like this. No. I've seen it with a three-way jointed well, that's, that's swivel. That's gonna pull, I uh, think that's going to knock socks off you yeah. traditionally. So thank you for sharing that. Let's go and catch. One, that's one brilliant, brilliant rig. I mean, I'll go absolutely ecstatic if I catch a salmon on this. That's nice, isn't it? I like the rod. You like it's it? a Northwestern. Yeah. That's a Northwestern. Yeah, it's a big my favourite rod. Is it? Well, you, get, you can have I've a go. A, no, I've got a, um, I've got a Northwestern um, eight foot bass rod. Okay. And I've had more bass on that rod. Than I love this rod. I thought I, 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 that was from um, Martin got it when we saw it. That was 120 quid, and I got. Um, but yeah, that was from uh, Avon Angling. Can I see your rods? We haven't even talked about your setup in terms of the rods. Uh, we've got a right now. Ladies and gentlemen, now whilst the plant chooses, let's come out of the wind because it's a bit windy here today. Um, Paul, can you talk me through the benefits of the multiplier on the Devon? I just find it a lot smoother. I find it sometimes hard to cast smoother. though. A lot of guys no, out there might no, find I it. Don't. No. Do you find, as long as you keep your thumb I on the reel, uh, yeah, I you can use, slip it out there? I usually use a smaller multiplier than this because of the level wind. Yeah. Well, that one's broken at the moment. So okay. I'm using this, which is a bit big, but it's it's okay. This one. Okay. Um, and I just find it easier. And again, that's 20, 20 pound maximum. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, fine. Right through. Right through, all the way through. Yeah. And there's your Devon minnow, which we've had a look at. I love the look of that. That's a yellow belly. That's got. A, they're famous. They are. Yeah, yeah. On I the mean, that, that's a the yellow belly. Who invented Avon. the Devon, by the way? Do you know the, the history? No, I do. Is it likely to be some of the rods on the Avon? Do you think? No, I wouldn't think it would have been invented on the Avon. No. I don't know that. There's a lot of talk about it, but there's a lot of rivers where it could have been invented. Devon Minnow used to be in Devon. We'll, it, we'll ask it? the viewers to find out and, and yeah. email us in, shall we? Yeah. Anyone that knows the origins, let us know. So that's the setup on that one. And what size have you got on there? Uh, 
true stick, oh, 10 foot. Lovely. Um, 20 to 50 grams. Brand new rod. Yeah. Test it. We've also got another brand new rod. Which is just amazing. And your dot is my Yeah, number eight is special. That was great. From Avon. From Davidson. Is this one from Davidson's or Avon? Oh, Davidson. Made for Davidson. Oh, made for Davidson. David tackled down in the rod he's down in by foot. And he's gone for 25 gram, which is quite heavy. Yeah. But on this flow, you can see the bigness. Really? Yeah. Same lot we've got down in Bristol, we've got the five six. And I set you up with two and a half to three six inch. 18 pound. 18 pound on there. I don't think that's going to let you down. And the reel no. you've got on there is a Shimano, isn't it? It's a uh, Shimano. Shimano, that's a lovely reel when you've got 20 pound weight on there. So there's the setup, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go fishing. Look what I go to. Are you at the gable? John's just this? removed, can I just say, yeah. John's just removed this treble out of my finger, ladies and gentlemen. We're just fishing with uh, Paul. I did the stupid thing and uh, tried to rescue a spinner off a tree. Impelled in my finger when I tried to throw it back out. John's very kindly come over and removed it with his, uh, he's, had a, he's had a bit of experience, but I'll tell you what, I was impressed with that. <laughs> The moral yeah. of the story, ladies and gentlemen, is remember to take the barbs off before you go fishing because yeah. I, I should have done that, and I normally fish barbless. I forgot. It's a brand new spinner. Yeah. So I've well got we to take the barbs off. In the take the barbs off. Everything's coming off. I'll tell you one thing. I'm taking all the barbs off every time. Um, uh, I asked where you were. Hey, on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> on the I'm, you know, I'm glad we had a soft ground. I'm glad yeah. that Paul was next to me because you must have carried well, me. I, I Did you carry down. me down? Yeah. I told him, I said, I feel really faint. I feel sick. I said, no, you're not. And I think I'm going to go. Said, yeah, I said, yeah. And it's the thought of just, uh, I think it was hitting a nerve in my finger. And it started yeah. to, it's just, the body was starting to close down. Yeah, it's, not, it's weird. It's, not. it's weird. I've never had that before like that. I've never had it. I thought it was this bad. I've had little back problems in the past. Yeah. Never, nothing like that. But what I've learned is um, John is not just a, a top... Yeah. Fisherman, he's also a fisherman. Yeah. That's a Patagonian guy. Patagonian. Yeah. Had a bit of experience. Tell us, tell us some of the stories you've had to deal with. Yeah. Hooks and lips. Yeah. Eyebrows. Yeah. Eyebrows. Yeah. What, 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 yeah. Nothing too delicate. Yeah. Lips. Lips. Not on the back side, surely. No, no, no. I tell you, I've, I've referred that to the doctor that one. <laughs> but, uh, oh, that's excellent. Yep. Am I going to be able to fish this year? Oh, I think. Yeah, yeah. not a problem. Okay. Yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Those flows are going to take a bit of a out. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, that was really good. I've just got to keep it dry now, haven't I? Yeah, don't, yeah, I'll don't keep it up. I'll keep it up. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Should I keep that as a backup in case I need to redress it, please? Or do you want to keep it as your backup? That's very kind of you. Thanks, John. Yeah, You're a top yeah, man. Yeah. I thought I could see myself running off for the whole day, like waiting in. in, in oh, it'd yeah, go away. It'd be three hours. I thought, well, that writes off. I mean, I'm. I picked Paul up, didn't I? Because mm. you're you're in the process of getting a new vehicle. Yeah. You phoned me up and you got a day off, and I said, okay, come and join me, and we'll go and hit the salmon. Bang! Within five ten minutes, he was doing everything right. I was like, working beautifully. He set me to do exactly the same as me. He hit the blooming tree. <laughs> The line blew. The, the line. Wind blew the wind. Over the line yeah. over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so, okay. well, thanks, John. Thanks. You good. Well, okay. Well, if, I, if we get a salmon, this will be definitely be going in the video. <laughs> now, what I want to do is try and catch a salmon from this deep hole. It's a lovely run. I've got the Devon minnow. Uh, flick cast. Oh dear, salmon rising. A uh, little flick cast. Just let it drop down. And that is a deep hole down there, so just trying to avoid all the weed here. We're just working our way up. Just working our way up. Up she comes. Again, a little flick cast, a little dinker, just let that drop, and then let's work it down the hole.
Okay, well we can see all the swallows and the San Martins coming up to us. And they've been feeding on this area here, flying and they like this. Now you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lovely V through here. Look at the tail. Isn't that lovely? And off a high tide, the fish will come up. They want to run through here. They might just hold back in these pools, ready to run. Jad and I were fishing here yesterday. We saw a salmon lying up just to my right here. I'll just point her out to you. Just on that little bar there. Just where that um, San Martin or Swallow went through there. So what I'm going to do is, there's the rig. Let's just have a look and see how she's working in the water first. Is there enough on there? And I would say, look at that. that Ladies and gentlemen, that's spinning through beautifully. You see that? So the barrel spins through. What it's using is it's using these blades on the Devon Minnow and it's capturing the current of the river and it's propelling the barrel. It just barrels out. This one's got built-in weight as well, so there's actually some, uh, it's made of wood, but inside there's a barrel, a weighted barrel, that helps for the spinning. Another top tip is, and I forgot to do this, is put a bit of plastic tubing on your wire so, for example, if you've got an old biro pen, take that out, cut it off, push the biro onto there, and you'll get a much smoother movement on the minnow. And also, if that comes out, that doesn't damage the salmon. Obviously, that'll help protect you against any pike, but if that was to come out, which it could do, the salmon would be effectively, at the business end, you've got the plastic to protect. But if there's a deep hooking, you could find the wire could cut into the salmon. So that has to be a very good tip. And I picked that tip up from Fred Whitlock. So here we go. So away we go. Just going to flicker out. So we'll just flicker a little bit about there. Look at her. She's, she's even spinning on the dive. You can see her spinning on the dive down. I reckon we've got six feet of depth here. And it's quite low. You can see it could be as much as eight feet here if we were up another two feet. Now I'm just literally going to almost limp fish through this. So I'm just letting it sit there for a bit. Uh, yesterday I had a pike on this setup and uh, I just lifted like this, lift up and draw, and it's almost like a nymph effect. So what you're doing is you're creating a, a rise from the Devon, and the salmon, they, they like that, and they come up and hit, they hit the rise. So it's like a, just stepping it down, it's like a nymphing approach, and it's just like a rise up, and you can take it right up. You can see that spinner, it's working brilliantly. Just look at that, look at that Devon work. Doesn't it look beautiful? I'm really happy with that, and I'll just drop her down again. So what we're doing is we're just bouncing the gravel bed, and it's a lovely clean gravel bed here, very little weed, giving some line. So there's many people who actually use the prawn and shrimp fish this way, and that's another way of doing it. So if you imagine you were trotting down a shrimp or a prawn, and you're just working and finding where the salmon are, you're just literally just bouncing it through. I don't have to cast, I can just lift and draw and let out line, and run it down the, the run. So there we go, we're just feeling our way through, finding out where are those salmon? Do they want to hit this? It's important to get your weighting right. Now I think I've got my weighting spot on here because I'm able to hold my position and the MEPS, or sorry, the Devon is actually spinning about eight inches above the gravel bar. And it's working really, really well. And it's that sink and draw that invites the take on. So sinking and bouncing her down. That's the technique. And letting out some line. And then we sink up. And we're not even moving from this position. So we've hit a snag. I didn't know there was a snag down here. So let's hope we haven't lost this lovely Devon. No, we're OK. Just hit something there, a bit snaggy. But you can pull out of that. The other thing about snags is if you do hit a snag, you lose the weight, not the Devon normally, because you've got that weight hanging off the bottom but look at that I tell you what if we can find a fish in this pool I'm sure a nice fresh fish which they will be he'll slam that Devon and we'll have a fight on our hands but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work it up and work it down and I'm slowly working through now slowly working through the pool so we go up and back up and back lifting her up and you can just see how she's working little flick cast now we're gonna go to the far bank and drop her nicely, pull her back through, pull her back through, just about there, on the V, and then arc fishing now, arc fishing. Sinking and drawing. Sinking and drawing. Now you've got a back eddy here, so you'd have to reel quite fast to get the, the MEPS or the 
get them to work. And that lovely back eddy there, salmon could turn around, they could be facing up that way as well, so they could turn on this. So a little flick cast again, hold her there, and then we're just going to let her do the arc again. Arc fishing, and we move down the pool. So we're slowly moving down the pool and bouncing through the gravel bars. So that's the way to Devon minnow fish. There's other ways of doing it. You don't have to have a weight. You can have all the weight built in the top end, or you can just fish on its own like a spinner. So Devon could be like a spinner, and you can fish it that way. So it's sinking and drawing, sinking and drawing. Up we come. That's lovely. And we're going to keep working down this pool. There's other pools that are worth doing. I'm just going to come in to there, just there. Isn't that lovely? Just working its way around that V and it's at the tail of the V the salmon often hang out so if you see a lovely V work that area very very carefully indeed they like the tails a lot of fish have been caught out of the tails this year so work those tails work it back work it back it's lovely I'm really really happy with this setup really happy indeed little flick cast pull it back in nice gentle splosh and I'm actually enjoying the wildlife as we go. I've got the swallows and sand martins, they're joining me on this fishing trip today. And the, and the pied wagtail's still there, so it's just lovely. You cannot get a better bit of wildlife as you're fishing. Pull her back, work her down. So beef up your tackle, make sure you've got at least, I would say 30 pound line is the recommended. You might think that's an overkill, but trust me, if you hit a 50 pound salmon, you'll be grateful that you have 30 pound line on. And there's always that prospect. The biggest fish out of this uh, royalty is 49. They're talking that threads could have been in the 40 mark. Now for a salmon to get 40 pounds, it normally has to be out either for four years, it's a, what they call a four winter fish. And because of that, they can put on nearly 10 pound on average a year. Obviously they put on more weight as they get bigger, but on average, let's say 10 pound a year. Or the other way of doing it is you get a fish that's run twice, that came in at 20, or 15 or 18 goes out for another year or two and comes back 40 plus so you do get that as well I think 40% of the hen fish make it back so you're likely to get a big hen that may have come back most of the cockfish unfortunately die I think the percentage is six to nine percent of the cockfish will make it so that's a low percentage you might think oh what a shame but they do actually, they're very aggressive, the males, and they're going to be fighting all the way through for the right to spawn, the right to cut in the reds, and because of that, you find a lot of the cockfish um, are hammered. I mean, we fish from February here, and the amount of cockfish that have come down absolutely hammered, the kelts, you think, my goodness me, they've been through the wars and the battles. Of course, they don't eat, so they might go in as 20-pounders, they might go down and come back out as 10-pounders or even less. They lose half their body weight during the period in the river. And that's one of the reasons why they have to pack on so much weight before they run these rivers. Just so they can live off their fat reserves and their protein reserves. And uh, that's part of the journey. That's part of their biology. Now we're moving into a nice bit of water here. Look at this. That feels nice. So again, we're just bouncy, bouncy. It's working lovely. Now, Another thing is, you know I've fished on the dangle. Well, why not fish the dangle on the Devon? Because you can sit here, waiting patiently for a, a fish to take it. You have sat here and you might leave it here for about 30 seconds, 20 seconds. And although you're not moving, that Devon is working 10 to a dozen. And it's flashing and flashing and flashing. It's attracting, attracting, attracting. There might be a fish that's 20 feet down below. See that Devon in front of it and think, hello slam it you might just come up and slam it underwater you won't see the underwater slam but you'll feel it and so that's another thing that will be running on that flow and that devon will be working 10 to the dozen and as you draw up it might take it so here we go going to come in tight now the tightness is right underneath my nose I'm working the tight now we're working this tight bit of bank here and it's like nymph fishing it's sinking and drawing sinking and drawing sinking and drawing and dropping back again and just letting her flick her back and bring her back bringing her back down she goes and then bringing her back and then working that Devon right this is the houseboat pool 
I think if we can start at the neck here. Can you see the neck? Right here is the starting position, I think, where you see that fast bit of water. Salmon could be lying in there, so we're just going to do a little flick cast, study the water first, see if you can see anything silver tight in here, and then we just kind of gently, just gently flick her out and let her just sit down. There's a lovely reed run there. I'm just going to bounce her through here. So, just lifting and drawing here. Just letting that Devon work its magic on the flow. Getting down nice and low. Just working it back. Up she comes. A little bit of weed there, so we've got to watch the weed. Just flicking her out. So, a little flick cast. A bit of an awkward swim, this one, but we can just do a little flick cast out. That's lovely. Just drop her in there. And then working her back. There's a lovely gravel bed. I can see the gravel there with my polarised glasses. It looks lovely. Got to keep on the main flow. So we're just pushing the rod out a bit. Just keeping her away on the main flow. There's a deep hole there. There could be a salmon lying under there. That Devon's working very well. I might even cast her slightly up because it's so fast. Just do a little flick cast, upstream it, then come around the back of it like that, and then you get the presentation right. What was that? That's mullet. At least I think it's mullet, just trying to get up. I think it's mullet, it might even be sea trout. We'll keep an eye on what goes on over there. But there's a fish powering up on the bank. I may have disturbed something down here, it may have just shot off that way, trying to get away. But this is working correctly. So just working the flow, working the flow, working the flow. There he is, look, that's the fish. You can see, he's just trying to power up there. Just trying to work out what he is, but just working the flow. So we're just tucking her in, and then that mir uh, minnow work its way through. There's the fish trying to power up. Is it a mullet? Is it a salmon even? powering up just on that flow. More likely to be a mullet, I'd say. We've got a lot of mullet in the system. So I can feel the rabbit beds. This Devon is right down. Working her. Huh? Bouncy, bouncy. I've only got about six inches or eight inches of leader off the weight, which means that minnow must be tight on the gravel bed. Just keep working it through. Salmon will sometimes get pushed back. Then they get fed up with you and they think, I've had enough of this and I'll just strike at it. You can push your salmon back. All right, this, this is working a treat here on the Devon. Wow, that's working a treat. Look at this, it just, just feels so right. I just feel that fluttering through, and I can feel the gravel bed on the weight. Of course, the gravel weight itself is making a lot of noise. And that's going to irritate it, just that bang, bang. Get irritation on the weight. Could also be another pointer. So flick casting out, just a little flick cast. Bring her back and then work work it out. Work it out. I can't believe my luck. The San Martins and Swallows are actually following me. <laughs> They're following me. Look. <laughs> Wherever I'm going it seems to be bird life. Working deep here now. Working very deep. Let's have a look at her. All right, let's show you how she's working in the water. There we go, a little bit of weed there. So you see how low we're getting? We're getting so low, we're picking up the, the moss growing at the bottom of the deck. So we know we're getting down low. So just drop her down. Now let's have a look at the spinner. Look at that, look at that, Devon go, look at it go. That's superb. I think this is more effective than the maps. So we're just going to flick her in there, bounce her through, working down the pool. This pool goes all the way down, there's a lovely tail around the end there, under the footbridge, and that's a lovely bit of water this, look at it, beautiful. Salmon have to come through here, nowhere else for them to go, he's got a narrow neck, hence this is why it's such a good pool. You focus your Devon right on, right on the run. You're not working the rest of the river, you're just literally working 20 feet of water 
and that's why it's so lethal here the Devon minnow and they've been fishing this technique for many a year here and it's produced some of the bigger fish so probably because you're getting down to the deep pools where the big boys lie and that's my rationale for why big fish come on Devons my target today is, is believe it or not I'm actually aiming for a 40 pounder today <laughs> now you might think I'm dreaming but there's a possibility possibility so I'm sinking and drawing nymph style Devon fishing sink and draw working her up tight against those weeds <sighs> that is working absolute peachy so they go again flick cast turn around and let her work through the current now the pool here gets slightly wider and it gets very very good along that bank, tight along that bank, Devon minnow fishing. You can drop the shrimp in there, the prawn in there, you can trot it with a float. You can actually use the prawn in the same way that I'm Devon fishing as well. That's another good way of fishing the prawn. So we could try that. We've got some fresh prawn in the car, caught out of Christchurch Harbour by Paul Shuttler, a commercial fisherman. He's given me a few. We'll see how they go. I'd like to present a prawn on this rig. Could be very interesting to see whether they take that. So all is looking good. Flicking that out now. Hi Paul. Hi. Any joy? Oh, I've got a load of knots in me brave. I've got to stop using that yeah. one. Have a look how this Devon's working. This is a top Devon pool here. I'll just show you how it's working. Flick casting out. There's a fish trying to get up the foot up the falls there. I yeah. might be a mullet, but there's a fish just trying to power up that, that gravel bar. I saw a bit of movement there earlier. I think it's a mullet. He's still there, look, you can see him powering up. You look at the you, you keep an eye on that bit of water and see if you can see a back of a fish. You might be a sea trout, but I've, I've, blo I've been right through this neck and I wonder whether I've moved a fish out of here and he's decided to run that way. Keep an eye on that, Paul. It might be a salmon or it might be a sea trout. Last night, I was here last night, Friday night is a good time to fish this. How did anyone turns up? Definitely. Yeah. Can what time? What, I'm gonna have to sure. Out what time are we... Um, oh, I don't know. We've got a port. Let's do a port. 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 I'm thinking about putting... Bring up some prawns. I can, I, oh, I, I, can, I can quickly change this, but I need a... I've got your... In my stuff, I've got all your rig to give you all your prawn stuff. So, what, do you want to try the prawn? Ledger oh, prawn? prawn? How's the nets working, though? All right. But you pleased with the... tangled up. What the, what the, what that? I've got a big knot in it, uh, 20 yards back, and it's all in a ball at the front. Have you got a swivel built into all that lot? Yeah. How's that happen then? You must have it's got... It's not happening. The swivel might have... I've got half the amount of line on as I started with the season. That's not <laughs> good, that's not good. So let it go down. Hit the bottom. Hold it there for a few seconds. If you work on the assumption, then that Paul was telling me that somewhere around here, one of these bolts, just out here, there is a lie. So I might have gone too far, I'll just bring it, bring it back a bit. Which lie did he say it was? One of these bolts, there's a lie. Might be this one here. So I'm going to just work it back through here. And I'm going to work this very carefully. So the lie is parallel with that bolt, just in that zone there. Come back off it. Just let it sit there like that. And just literally, let's, let's, let's play the dangle game. We're going to play the dangle game now. We're going to sit here for about 10, 15, 20 seconds. Just going to nudge it. See if we can get a reaction. So sinking and drawing, sinking and drawing. Hold it on the dangle. Wait for the salmon to come up on it. And then up. And then up. The other technique is you can drop the rod down like this and now just look how deep that goes. Look at the look at the stinking depth man, this is deep. Just look at the depth this is, look at my rod, nine foot rod, and I'm not even at the bottom. Look at that. That is deep. My goodness me. <clears throat> that is seriously deep. It's about eleven foot hole. We found an 11 foot hole here. That means I've got to drop back here. Right, give it lots of line, get that weight down. So 
Right. 11 foot hole. Drop her down. Believe this. What? Unbelievable. Yeah, it's a hole in the half. Uh, look at this, we've got a family coming through. Family of swans. Neat swans, there we go, the mum and dad. Coming through. And they're coming down here to Oh, I've never got this close to a beautiful family. Look at that, isn't that just lovely? Ladies and gentlemen, look at that. Isn't that just nice? Isn't that lovely? I've never been this close before. Look at that! Wow! That is so beautiful! Wow! One, two, three, four, five. That is stunning. Look at that. Wildlife here on the Royal Sea very confident. Look at them go. Isn't that just beautiful? Off they go. <laughs> lovely, 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 lovely. Seven minnow. This one's a golden brown with a red in it. You can see it at the front. It's weighted, so it's got its own weight. And we're going to keep it like a Devon spinner. And the blades either side will be the propeller. That's the mounting. So it all looks pretty good to me. We'll give that a shot and see how we go. on. Okay, we've got two standers. One more mother carrying another one. There they are. Look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? Isn't that lovely? Sean, can't let you hit this. Is it a pike or is it a salmon? Devon Minnow's been hit by something. Wow, it's hit it. I wonder what's hit this. It's coming in on this pool. I think it might be a pike. I don't know yet, I haven't woken up. But he's hit the Devon, whatever it is, hit the Devon. And I think it feels like a pike to me. Let's have a look. Where are we? Going. Oh, it's going. It's just woken up. I think it's a pike. Oh. It's the first time I've ever had a fish on a Devon minnow, to be honest with you. This is nice. The rig is working. He's stripping. He's stripping. Oh, that was surprising, though. I think it looks like a, a pike. Yeah, he's taken the Devon. Beautiful. Oh. So it's working, ladies and gentlemen. It's working. Let's get his head up. There we go. Look at that. Whoa. There's the Devon minnow. And it looks like it's a four or five pounder. He's taken it right. Whoa, look at that. Whoa. Off he goes. Oh, yes. Just clipped it on the edge of the lip there. It's a pretty little fish though. Look at that. Devon Minnow takes the pike out. Whoa, he's hit that. Whoa. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Four or five pounder. So, I'm careful to chin him up. 
And there he is. He's absolute beauty. Isn't he just a beauty? Absolute beauty. Very, very nice. And the Devon Minnow's hanging out just on the edge of the lip there. So we'll unhook him. He's got razor sharp teeth, so we're going to be careful. We'll kill him. With our hands. And go up carefully. There we go. Now, just gently take the hooks out. Out we come. Right there, we're fishing a really, really famous pool here, um, down the Hampshire Lake. This is the Royal Teeth. And over here, we've got Edwards up there, which comes off the Great Weir. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to book out the compound, so we can't fish um, the compound. But below the compound, which is this beautiful run here, where the two rivers come back down, we can fish off this bank. Yeah. And you actually put the Devon Minnow through that glide. Now, across there on the corner, what you've got over there is you've got about a seven or eight foot gully that runs all the way down, and salmon lie in there. We just had a pike out of there on the maps. Yeah. There's also a good chance that salmon could be lying up there as well. I'm going to take the Devon. Now, if we get down and hold there for a position, we're going to use a Devon minnow. And this is called a gold belly. Mm -hmm. It's got a brown top. And Fred Whitlock tipped me off and said, as much paint off as possible is best. He says, make it look rustic. He says, don't want it too smooth. <laughs> the more rustic it is, you have so many fish on these Devons. You get smaller than that, but you get little dinky Devons like that small. <laughs> but that's the um, Devon. Now, there's a mount for it. The mount is actually in here. So there's the little mount. I've taken the barbs off this mount. There's the mount, okay, with the trebles out of it. It's basically a bit of wire, like a wire trace, and it goes in like that. And what you do, if you hold that for me, just show you how it works. This is the setup. Now, at the back end here, you've got your Devon minnow. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. See that? This is the brown gold. It's made of wood, but inside there's a metal barrel, so it's a weighted Devon, this one. A lot of people don't use weighted Devons, so they use um, just bolts of wood or wood. Now, the idea is the current gets into the blades, and guess what happens when, that, when the current works the blades? Spins. That spins like a spinner on the mount, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's really, really, really good. Some people, like Fred Whitlock, had a piece of plastic coming out of that mount, like a biro pen. I could put a biro pen onto that and it'll be a lot smoother connection. It makes it run smoother. And trust me, if um, Fred's had a lot of fish with the Devon Minnow, so it might give him an edge. Mm. But that's the setup, so that's how it works. And then you've got a swivel coming out of the Devon so that your line doesn't go. I've got a swivel at the back end here. So you've got about two and a half feet. You can go out longer, but it depends on where you want to go. And I'm fishing a very short six inch off the deck. I know there's hardly any weed there. That weight's going to be on the deck. I'm going to be bouncing on the gravel, whereas this is going to be swinging up six inches above the gravel bed, right in the face of the, Devon, of the salmon. It's a beautiful technique, and you have to adjust the weight. Now, I could put a swivel link on there, and you can adjust the weights according to the pace, but I know what this is. That's about right. We're sticking with that at the moment. I could put a link swivel on there, but yeah. So that's the setup. Let me just show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take him out onto here and see whether we can get a salmon. Right, we're going to fish the Devon. There's the setup. So, I'm going to flick her out and just bounce her across here. So, just a little flick cast. And then just like, bounce across on the curve. And then just hopefully there's enough flow for that to work correctly. It's really deep here, so just lift and draw. Just lifting and drawing. And just lifting and drawing. That's lovely. Oh man, it's working so well, Jad. Yeah. Just gonna lift and draw like a nymph. Just keep that going. On the flow. And we're just making that work and you can see the spinner look out look at it go look at the Devon go I'll show you the surface what it looks on the top that's what it does it's deadly absolutely deadly on fast flow we've got fast flow here so little flick cast and then we just work it back 
and just bounce it through this deep pool here. I think we might have hit some weed. We've hit some weed, so let's put out that weed. That might have been a bit ambitious going that far. Let's go back a bit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've just seen a beautiful kingfisher. And now, just in the last 45 minutes, we've got a chance to put the Devon minnow through the railway bridge pool. And I'm going to just tuck her in here and bounce her off the gravel with a little flick cast and get on that fast flow. So just nice and gently does it. Down we go. And then we're just going to bounce her through here. Just seeing if we've got a salmon down here. There are some snags down here, so this is a little bit dangerous, but the Devon's coming up nicely, so can't complain. We'll just flick her out. Just hold her there. There's a very shallow bar there. I can work off that bar and just drop her into the hole. There's a deep gully of about five feet through here. And that Devon minnow, what it does, it's using this fast water to rotate, and it will drag a salmon out of its hole up and hitting it. You can see it working. So it's a bit like nymph fishing. It's working lovely, really, really well. Gaz mepsing up there, he's going to be doing the upstream meps on the hot spot and I'm just going to see if I can develop this little swim here. I know it's got a nice bit of water here, salmon could tuck in here. It's a lovely gully, so the Devon's working well. It's fast enough for it to work through here, so it's looking good. That's okay. I'm going to flick cast it again, out we go. And then just turn that round off the flow off the weed and let that just kick round and then run it through, running it through. We're in. Fish on. Fish on, Jared. Fish on. It's a pike. We've got a pike on. I think it's a pike. We'll soon find out. We like that Devon. He's tucking in here now. Yeah, it's a pike. I think it's a pike. Is it a pike? I think it is. So we're going to have to just play him out. Bring his head up. He's tucked in. There he goes. There he goes. Oh, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a, a pike on the Devon. Yeah, the pike took it. They're such deadly... Ma it could easily have been a salmon. Easily. So he's just going in the shallows. Jack, can you bring the landing net, please? So this could be a trial run for a salmon. If you get a salmon through here, let him run and pull him into the slack water here, and that's the landing zone. So there we go. I'm still in touch with him. He's going to land him with a landing net, even though the Devon's on the edge. He's not going to cut that line off, and it's about a three or four pound jack. But it just shows, ladies and gentlemen, the method works. So I'm pleased with that. And let's say if we had an Atlantic salmon, he would hit that. It worked very, very well. So you can see how effective they are. There you go, Jack. Oh, he's jumping for us. He's only a small one, but he's fighting well. So we've got him here. Now, have you got the net? There he comes. Do you see him? He's taken that Devon really well. So we're just going to get his head up now, and we should be able to drag him onto the net. And up he comes. Barbless hook, so he should come out okay. Let's have a look at him. You can see where the Devon has taken him. So we can come over here on the grass. Take the rod, please, Jack. So let's have a look at him. There's a little Jack. Oh, he slammed it. What about that? What about that? I've got the forceps. Let's have a look at what we've got here. So we've got a little Jack of about two and a half to three pounds. Get the forceps out. And what we'll do, there's the Devon minnow. It's just on the edge. Look, we've just lip hooked him. So just going to go in with the barbless. We'll pull the Devon out. You can see there's a little wire trace there. So it's designed, if pike do hit them, that wire trace basically 
Where has he gone? Protects the line, and you can see he's just tucked in there. Into a big fish here. Just gonna see what he's got. It might be a salmon. Just getting to him. <coughs> Is it a big fish? It looks like a salmon. Okay, just keep the pressure on. So you're in a good position here. Just play him out. Is it a big fish? Can you feel it? Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Just look at that. It's a, it's a big fish. Just play him up. That's it. Play him on this side here. So I knew there was salmon in here, Bob, didn't I? Did I tell you? Did it? Did you see him attack it? No. I this could be a very, very big fish. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we've just been here 20 minutes. Bob's into his first salmon. And I'm just looking at that and thinking, that is just amazing. He's a heavier rod. Okay, try and keep him out of the snag. He's just so keep him, follow him up, follow him up. It's a big fish. Yeah, that's okay. You can move up with him if you like, but keep in touch. Just keep his head up so he doesn't get in the snags. Wonderful fishing, but wonderful fishing. Is it a big fish, or it looks like a good fish? He's biting well. Keep him away from those iron railings over there. That's where the snags are. Just give him the right hand side. That's it. Keep playing him in. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this was taken on a Mets five. Bob's fishing. Uh, what was it? A two pound test curve. And yeah. um, what else have you got on there, Bob? 20 pound line. I put my 30 pound lead on there for him. He's got a 60 pound power so uh, You'll be okay. Just take your time. There's a snag to your left, so keep him to your right if you can. But he's going well. This is a big Atlantic, ladies and gentlemen. A big Atlantic salmon. So well done. Well done. Where's bats did he take? Storm. Has he pulled out? Oh, unlucky, Bob. Unlucky, mate. What, Ooh, what can I I'm say? Gonna go, I'm going to put the other wall on. Yeah, sure. Let's, let's just show ladies and gentlemen your rig. He pulled out, did he? Did he bend the hook or not? Yeah. How big do you reckon that fish was? I don't know, but I had him on for three, three longer, minutes. Longer than you had yours. Perfect. You. Yeah, that's so at least three or four minutes. Um, are you shaking or are you okay? Oh, no, I'm shaking. Yeah, a salmon experience is a, sa is a shaking experience. That fish. Oh, what? Well, happy... I fancy losing it. I've no idea, Paul. It could you be... thinking that was 20 plus? I would have thought it. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you played it in. Nothing you could have done wrong there. It just pulled out. Everything you did was perfect. Yeah. These things happen. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some a different set of hooks on there for you. Stronger hooks. Okay. And see if that helps. Okay. I'll go and get my other okay. reel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right on cue. We've got a swan coming down here. Bob, there's a bit of wildlife for you straight away. Bob, show us how you cast into that salmon. Let's see your technique. It was a flick cast, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Let's have a look and see how it went. Show us how you, what you did. And then talk, talk the me bridge. through talk me through exactly what happened, yeah. Under the bridge? Under the bridge, between those two. Using the main straps. Yeah, using a MEPS 5, 20 pound yeah. line with 30 pound fluorocarbon on the end. So is that about the position you're on? A bit further over. A bit further over, okay. Just working it back. So the countdown was two or three seconds. Well, yeah, because I couldn't put my snag on. So it wasn't a very deep countdown then. Well, it, I, it was when I hooked it. Yeah. But I seem to be hooking. Where was the taking I, spot? Was it behind the back of the first column? Just in column? front of that. Just in front of that column. So where you see the nice glide coming off it, that yeah. fish was sitting up that way, and you took it as it came through. Well, I think he came at it twice because the first time I thought it was. He came at it twice. <coughs> Is that more like the cast? That's a better one. Yeah. yeah. Were you further, even further than that? Right. 
All right, here we go. Water's meat. The barber men have told me there's a salmon jumping here. A big one at that. Might be a 30 pounder. So I'm putting the MEPS through here just to see whether or not we've got a big boy in here. I might want to come on this. And we're just working it back. Working it back. Just hitting a bit of weed there. So let's just up it and bring it round. Sticking with a five, MEPS five. Sticking it out. It's got some distance this cast. I'm here with Bob Taylor, who's lost a big salmon this morning. We're looking at about 25 to 30 pound class. His first ever day out on the Avon salmon fishing. Yep, Bob's on the bank here. So we're going to just flick it out. And out we go. Look at that sink and good draw. There's a huge deep hole here. You can see why the fish sit out here. And we're just going to work it back, working it back. By doing this chest wading out, fish just rose over there. By just chest wading out, we get the chance to um, fish this pool because otherwise it's just all weed and it's very, very difficult to get out to. So I'm just going to give that a go. sorted that out. So there's a fish jumping further up, so we're going to go for it. Give it a good cast and then just work it back. Just working it back. Fish following, fish following. We've got a salmon We've got a salmon follow. Sam, salmon follow. Bob's seen the action. We had a follow there, ladies and gentlemen. I might have retrieved too fast, but that was right under our feet. We might be up for this. Nice and slow retrieve. Nice and slow. Working it back. Working it back. That was worth spinning it out. I had a good follow there. I was within about a second of a, of a hit. Literally one second in it. He followed it and he just turned his nose up right on my rod tip. Right. I'm going to fish this deep, deep, deep on the Devon. You can see I've got an orange and brown Devon here. There's a lovely glow. Oh, I'm coming! Bob's into a fish. I'm coming! Bulls, Bob's into a fish. So it might be a salmon. I've got to go down and help him. There might be a pike. There might even be a pike. Okay, we just have to get going. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is exciting, exciting fishing. We'll just take this down, run down to him, give him a hand. Take the net with us. Oh. Right. Oof. <coughs> He's into a fish. Let's get going. I wonder if it's a pike or a salmon. It could be a big salmon. I told him where the pool was, and he's probably fishing it. I can't see him, where is he? Bob? 
Are you in? You still on? I think it's a pike. Is it a pike? Sorry? You got a fish on? Yeah. Salmon or? Oh, it's a pike. Oh, it was a how, big's the, how big's the pike? Yeah, just you're in the right spot. You're in the right spot. Just have to work it out. Oh, wow, you had a bit of sport then. How big is it? Let's have a look at her. Oh, it's not bad. For a second, I thought you were into a salmon. I'll come down this way. Oh, I heard the shout. I thought, wow. Just walk up a bit. Walk up. Well, those pike do. All right, let me just come in. It's fast water. I'll come in. All right, just lift its head up. Okay, I got him. He's taking it quite deep. That's what I was worried about, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll be able to get it out. Yeah. I've got four sets with me, so if we just... It's quite a fast flow. You put your rod down and come and hold the net. And I'll just go in there with the pliers. Oh, I've got my four sets, so... Just hold that. I'll try my forceps first. If that doesn't work, we'll try the pliers. Yeah. 